and welcome back to Beauty Bee, where today we are going over some recent releases that have actually piqued my interest. Um, I try to do these videos about every six weeks, but looking back over what I've posted, I posted the most recent one of these just over a month ago at this point, and I had 10 releases in I think the last three of these videos that I did. And today I have 14. So it seems that recently brands have actually been releasing things that appeal to me. That's not super surprising. I tend to like spring, early summer releases more than fall and winter ones. I really like pastels. I like pinks and purples and those tend to be very springtime and somewhat summery things to release. So, because we do have 14 releases, I'm going to try to move through these pretty quickly because I so things might have shifted because it's been about four hours since I filmed the intro to this video and then I got interrupted and just kept getting interrupted. So, let's just go through things. Starting with this Ofra highlighter, and this is the Mother Earth highlighter. First of all, this is stupid expensive. This is $35, which, no. I'm absolutely not going to spend $35 on a highlighter. However, it is really very pretty. I really like that the base color on it seems to be pretty white. Um, I find that that can make highlighters a lot easier for me to wear. And the shift on this is so pretty. It goes green to pink, which is not a combination that I have seen before. It sounds very interesting. I haven't seen anyone use this. I haven't checked if this is still available. Um, it doesn't really matter to me if it is or not because, it, again, it's a $35 highlighter and that is insane, but it is pretty. That it is. I really kind of hate just how much I like the idea of a lot of Jaclyn Cosmetics' most recent releases. I think this is actually a somewhat innovative product. The Face It All Brightening and Setting Palette. Now, obviously, there are powder palettes out there. I mean, there's the Hourglass Ambient Lights trios. Unlike Hourglass, Jaclyn Cosmetics seems to be interested in appealing to people who are deeper skinned than me. So there are three different palettes catering to a pretty wide variety, I would think, of skin tones. That deepest palette is actually orange and brown enough to the point where at first when I saw it, I assumed that it was a blush bronzer palette, which kind of reveals just how little a lot of companies appeal to deeper skin tones. I didn't even think of the possibility that it could be a powder palette at first. Anyway, I have no idea if these are good, but this is definitely a type of product that I think is interesting and I would like to see more brands come out with. Now we're going to transition into eyeshadow for a little while starting out with the ColourPop Color Sticks. These are uh, twist up eyeshadow crayons. I have something similar, probably, from Urban Decay. And I wanna say that it's like a $26 product, $28 product. It's too much money for what it is, but I do really like it. These are kind of intriguing to me because these are a much more reasonable price and, you know, ColourPop does run, does, and you know, ColourPop does run sales, so you could probably get these for more like five to six dollars sometimes. I have not heard anything about the formula on these, but I really like using my Urban Decay one as a base, so I think it might be fun to get one or two somewhat deeper colors that I could then layer more shimmery shades over. I think it's nice that they came out with both the matte and the shimmery option. And they also, in the shimmery formula, have the kinds of colors that I hoped the Urban Decay ones would have. They have these really light champagne and pinks and light golds that you would probably want in that format if you were actually looking to use these as a one and done shadow or to use in the inner corner. I think this was a really smart release. It kind of surprises me that ColourPop didn't have these before. It just seems like something they should have had at some point, but I guess not. Next up we have something from Sleek. You know, I actually don't think that 
this has come to Ulta, which is, I believe, the only U.S.-based retailer that sells Sleek. I assume that this is available on the Sleek website, though, so I guess if I really wanted it, I could get my hands on it. But this palette looks so pretty. That bottom row is exactly the color scheme that I've been wanting this spring. Light but interesting colors in this shimmery finish. Lovely. There are also some really pretty mattes uh, sprinkled across that those first two rows. I'm into this. Um, it also seems to be a really good price point. It is 13 pounds, which what a pound's like a dollar forty, so that would be eighteen twenty. That's not too bad. It's cute. It's eighteen shades. I kind of like the highlighter palette too. They're really pretty shades. Obviously, they wouldn't be highlighters on me. I wouldn't purchase this product because it wouldn't work for me, but it is very, very pretty. Okay, is it just me or did Morphe actually do a really good job with this? I think the color scheme is really pretty on this palette. I like how they've organized it into these columns where every column very much keeps to a color theme. The balance of shimmer and matte seems to be there and the colors that I would choose to be shimmers are actually shimmers. It's, it's really quite pretty. I feel like you could get a complete look out of pretty much any of these rows. The pink one might be a little bit harder just because there's not really anything super deep, but there are those purples and reds right next to it. Overall, this is a really nice little palette. I even kind of like the design that they've put on the front, which... Hey, good job, Morphe. Next up, we have Kiko's Summer Release. This is fruit-themed, and I acknowledge that 90% of why this is on the, this list is probably just the packaging. In particular, the compacts, I think, are just adorable. There's the face and eye palette, which has a kiwi on it. The orange bronzer is adorable. I cannot say that I would have chosen to put a bronzer, of all things, in orange packaging. That probably sends a bit the wrong signal to people, but you know what? It is really cute, and the embossing on the product is really cute too. I'm really not sure what this red compact is even supposed to be because the embossing on the product are, I think, raspberries, but the compact doesn't look like raspberries to me. Maybe I'm missing something really obvious or it's just some other type of fruit and I'm going to be just face palming myself as I'm editing, but I don't see it, at least not right now. Do you? <laughs> Can someone tell me what this is supposed to be? Now, the makeup in the Kiko release was pretty basic, but in cute packaging. Here we have, again, pretty uh, basic makeup, really cute packaging, but uh, it's a lot more expensive. Specifically, what I'm talking about are the Charlotte Tilbury Instant Look at Palettes. She has come out with two new ones of these, and specifically the one that I would be interested in if I were to get either of these, would be Glowing Beauty. It is a little bit lighter. It has sort of a cool toned bronzer. It has sort of a golden pink trio of eyeshadows, some face powders, all in a pretty, and they all look like they would work really well for fair skin. Everything in this palette is really pretty to me. The big sticking point with this release and with all of the Charlotte Tilbury releases is, of course, the price. Um, I'm looking at this on Beauty News. So they're putting the price as £55, which would be $77-ish. I'm just ex assuming that everything keeps the exchange rate standard. Of course, not every retailer is going to convert directly from pounds sterling to US dollars, but now, we're looking somewhere in the ballpark of 80 bucks, probably. And uh, I, I can't do that on a palette. Anyway, I got off on a little bit of a tangent there that I probably cut out because it was long meandering and honestly not even interesting. But $80 is too much. That's my final thoughts. 
Next up, we have another collection. This is from Besame, and this is the best done Marilyn Monroe collection that I think I've seen. I really am not a fan of putting Marilyn's image on things, just slapping her face on something and then selling it. There's a, mm, don't love it. But this is really pretty, and I think this is a bit of a unique take in that they have recreated some items that were in her vanity, in her makeup collection. The packaging is stunning. It definitely does have that 50s to early 60s glamour to it. I love the gold and black. The lipstick packaging is stunning. It looks super high-end. Overall, this seems like a really well thought out and I think probably the single most respectful release that I've seen between a makeup brand and Marilyn Monroe in particular, but also pretty close to the top as far as respectful releases with dead people in general. I think they did a good job. It's really pretty. There are actually three lip products on my list today, which is again, kind of unusual. I think usually there's one, sometimes a second one will sneak in, but it's rare. But again, brands have been on their A-game recently. The first one we have to talk about is from Gucci. These are their Rouge de Beauté Brilliant Glow and Care Lipsticks. Okay, another question that may be very silly. Why are Gucci's product names in French. Does, does that make sense to other people? What am I missing here? Anyway, I really love a slim format lipstick, which these are. I love um, beautiful packaging, which these have. I, the color selection is gorgeous. Um, I think I could probably add a couple of lighter nudes and something that goes a little bit more peachy, but They've got a wide variety of really lovely reds, some browns, pinks, and corals. Really pretty. I like this a lot. It seems from what I've seen online that these are a little bit more pigmented than what you would expect from a run-of-the-mill tinted lip balm, but they are still sheer, they're still shiny, they're still supposed to be pretty moisturizing, and um, for $42 they better be. <laughs> don't know anything else to say about that. A release that I actually could see myself picking up one of at some point are the new NYX Lip Lingerie XXL. These are NYX's revamped matte lip liquid lipstick formula. I've never tried one of the lip lingeries. I've always been kind of interested, but I've just never taken the plunge. Um, but these are such pretty shades that I could actually see myself potentially purchasing one. There are definitely some brighter shades, there's some reds and some brighter pinks in there, but overall I think that this shade range sort of takes like a all-encompassing view of nude and it's it's really pretty. I really like how they've broken this down into, you know, terracottas and browns and beiges, not just going Here's nude, here's pink, and here's red. That's really helpful, and um, it's probably a good marketing choice on their part because I can kind of look at these individual sets of colors and be like, ooh, I would like to try that one from the mauve and that one from the beiges rather than just looking at it and picking maybe one from the whole color range. Good job, Nyx. You, you, you know how to play me. The next item is on the... Next item actually worked its way onto this list because I thought it sounded like a better version of one of NYX's other um, liquid lipstick formulas, the Soft Matte Lip Cream. I used to own several of those. I, I, yeah, I am done with all of them now. They've either expired or gotten decluttered or I've finished them. But these, but that's another tangent. These are the new Hourglass Velvet Story lip creams. They sound very much like the same idea. The shade range on these is really um, not great. It's all nude and there aren't even really deep, deep nudes or really light nudes. It's just kind of these 
middle of the road, slightly peachier or slightly rosier versions of nude. Not super interesting to me, but I think that the formula is interesting and I hope that with Hourglass on board, maybe some other brands will get into the soft matte lip cream game and put out some more interesting shades. The I've heard good things about the Sigma Corduroy's eyeshadow palettes, which I believe came out several months ago at this point, but the a more recent addition is this Corduroy's blush palette. I feel like most blush palettes really have one of two problems. Either the shades are all so similar that it, it seems worthless to even have a palette. Like, why not just buy one blush? They're all going to look roughly the same on your cheeks anyway. And on the other hand, you have these blush palettes that are way too all over the place. Um, you know, they go really light and really peachy, but they also go really dark and really cool tone. And it's like, who wants all of these items? It's, it seems like the, and to the point where you're not sure who they're for, it seems like a single person would be unlikely to be able to use all of the shades in it. This palette, I think, strikes a really nice balance. The shades are different enough to warrant all of their inclusion, but I could see one person actually wanting and using all six of these shades. It's not the most exciting release, but I do think it's a solid one and a cute one. Okay, this next one is kind of exciting to me, mostly because I was actually planning a video to come out next week. I don't know if I'll film it at this point, but it was partially about why Too Faced should bring back... But it was partially about why Too Faced should bring back these Love Flush blushes, and now they have. They beat me to it. For a super popular item in their line, I really don't know why they discontinued them actually. It seems like they always sold really well. They had a palette that people seemed to really enjoy. They always had these kits that came out in the holidays where you could get like tiny little ones of these along with their... I want to say it was they were their um, melted lipsticks, so they, they could have put some glosses or one of their liquid latexes or something in there at some point. But these are cute. I love the little bunny prints. It's classic Too Faced. I'm thinking that the picture that I am seeing right now is probably a little bit lighter than the blushes actually look. I, I cannot imagine that Too Faced put out three blushes out of their five shade range that would only work on someone who was really pretty close to my complexion, especially that lightest one in the image. Honestly, that looks like it might even be too light for me, which doesn't happen. Anyway, I'm excited to see that these are back. A little disappointed that uh, a good chunk of that video is now obsolete, but you know, I guess I got what I wanted. And then finally, one more blush release. Again, there aren't usually this many blushes on these lists, but I've really been liking the blush releases that have been coming out recently. These are from Pat McGrath, they're the Divine Blushes. Most of these are a demi-matte, which is fine. I'm mostly just interested in the shade ranges. The two shades that really jumped out at me were Flirtatious, which, cute name, and Divine Rose. These are the cooler toned, more pink shades in the collection. Both look beautiful. In particular, I've really been wanting a shade that looks a lot like flirtatious for quite a while. It seems like a lot of the more recent blush releases have been going a bit warmer. It seems like people as a whole are not quite as into pinky blush as they have been in the past, but I still like pinky blush and I like things that maybe even go a little bit more into purple. And while Pat McGrath hasn't quite done that, she has released some really lovely pink. I do wish that the outer packaging was a little bit more interesting as well, but I suppose that's not really what you're supposed to be paying for, eh? And there we have it. There is my far too long list. I kept um, stammering and tripping over words and going on tangents, so I st still ended up somehow spending an hour filming this video. Anyway, I hope that I have managed to significantly cut down on the runtime in editing 
and I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please consider liking and subscribing if you did, and let me know if you have picked up any of these, or if there are other new releases that you've been eyeing. I would be very interested to hear about it. Thanks again for watching, and I really hope I'll see you next time. Bye!